Hey guys, it's Mike here. Uh, today I'm going to show you a video on how to add stabilization and auto leveling to your plane. I'm going to step you through the process of setting it up and I'm going to show you how easy this is to set up. The product we'll use to do this is the Hobby King KK 2.0 board. This is a board that multi-copter pilots are using for auto leveling. But what most guys don't know is you can use these boards on a regular RC plane. It used to be that these systems cost over 100 US dollars. This is a board that currently only costs 30 dollars. I'll walk you through the setup and when we're all done we'll flight test it. So what exactly is stabilization in auto leveling? They sound a lot alike but they're actually different. Stabilization is a way of automatically correcting unwanted movements usually caused by the wind. For example, if your plane gets rolled to the right from the wind, stabilization would try to counteract the movement and roll it back to the left. I'm going to demonstrate how the stabilization works on my yaw. Take a look at my rudder at the back of the plane. Look what happens when I shift the plane in one direction. Or watch the elevator react as I move the nose up and down. Watch how the ailerons react when I roll the plane right or left quickly. Now auto leveling is a way to keep the plane level. This means that the plane isn't rolling to the right or the left and the plane in the nose isn't moving up or down, but the plane is staying level. Let me demonstrate auto leveling for you. Watch my ailerons now that I have it in auto leveling mode. When I try to turn my plane to the left, aileron tries to correct that and turn the plane back to the right. Notice how it works on both the right and the left ailerons. Take a look at my ailerons from this angle. Look at my elevator. Let's say that the plane starts to go down. The elevator automatically comes up to bring the plane back up. Likewise, if I bring the nose up, the elevator goes down to bring the nose of the plane down to help keep it level. One thing you'll notice though is that the it doesn't make a difference on the yaw, so the rudder won't do anything when I turn the plane side to side because at this point the plane's still flying level, so there isn't really any yaw input needed. So with the auto leveling, you can tell the plane to roll to the right, and then the auto leveling will automatically bring it back level. That's pretty cool, huh? Now I should mention that when you use auto leveling and stabilization, you still have control of your plane. Uh, it's just being assisted by these two features. Yeah, you're probably not going to be able to do heavy aerobatics uh, like rolls uh, and loops with the auto leveling. So just keep that in mind. Um, the good thing is this is a feature you can turn on and off to try so you can test it out to see whether you like it or not. So in the situations where you need to do those aerobatics, you can turn this, turn the feature off. So the KK2 board offers the ability to do stabilization and auto leveling. It uses a very small three axis gyros and accelerometers to accomplish that. If you only have a four channel radio, you have to turn on or off these settings from the board before you fly it. If you've got a radio with six or more channels, you can set it up so that you can turn these settings on and off from your radio. On my radio, I've got my flap switch here, which turns on the auto leveling. And then I have the gear switch on the top, which turns on the stabilization. You can also set it up if you have a three position switch. You can have both features off, a middle position where you have just the uh, stabilization and then a bottom position we have stabilization and auto leveling. I believe it also works with a dial switch if you have one. I don't have one on this radio, but you can uh, set the dial switch to 0, 50%, or 100% and achieve the same thing as a three switch setting. 
I'm going to demonstrate the setup on my Spectrum DX6i radio. So at 21 grams, this board is pretty light. I put a piece of Velcro on the back of my board so that I can mount it to the uh, inside of the plane at the base of the fuselage. This board has got a lot of other features, but in this video, I'm just going to cover the basics, you know, the simple setup just to get it working for your plane. And then you can make the adjustments yourself, tweak it as you like. Uh, for better performance. It's got options to fly this on a delta wing setup also. It comes with this handy little buzzer too that you can plug into the board um, and it has a low voltage alarm that you can set, a lost model alarm. Note that if you want to use the low voltage alarm you need to hook up a battery connector to this board. You actually have to solder it on. If you'd like to know how to solder up the connector to the uh, battery for the voltage alarm to work, um, I'll put a link right here to the video that DDHS Racer did that shows you how to do the, um, the soldering for that. The other benefit is if someday you decide you want to get into multi-copters, you can take this board and put it on your multi-copter. You can also use the board for camera stabilization at the same time that you're using it in your plane for um, auto leveling and stabilization. So here are the parts you're going to need in order to do this. You want to check the video notes for a link to all the parts. The first thing you'll need, obviously, is the Hobby King KK 2.0 board. The next thing you'll need is a USB -A ASP programming device and cable. This is going to allow us to flash the firmware on our KK 2.0 board. You'll need a BEC to help power the board. And you'll need to solder on a battery connector of your choice. You can see on mine, I soldered on a Dean's battery connector because this is what I use. Make sure that you get a BEC with enough amp rating for your servos. Three amps is a good size for small 9 gram servos on a plane. Five amps is good if you have larger servos on your plane. A Y power adapter to connect your ESC and your BEC to your battery. Or you can make one yourself if you want. This is one that I made. You'll need five male-to-male -male servo leads. First you need to flash the firmware on your KK2 board. There's a special Open Arrow 2 firmware that you put on this that makes this thing work for planes and not just multi-copters. Now if you're a PC owner, you'll need to install the driver for the USB ASP programming device so this thing can plug into your computer. If you're a Mac owner you don't need to install the driver. Flight Test did a good video to show you how to install the driver for this thing. I'll supply a link to the video. Go ahead watch the video and come back here after the driver is installed. Now that you have the driver installed for your computer you want to plug in the ribbon cable into your KK2 board. When you plug it in make sure that the ribbon actually faces to the inside of the board like so. Then you can plug this USB device into your computer. Now you're ready to flash the firmware. Click on this link for a video from DHDS Racer for instructions. You want to follow his instructions to install the firmware. Instead of choosing the firmware that he chooses, you want to install the most recent Open Arrow firmware. The one that I used was Open Arrow 2 Beta 4. Once you have the Open Arrow 2 firmware installed on your device here, when you plug in the USB device, watch the screen. You should see Open Arrow logo on the device and then press any button for status. You can remove the ribbon cable from the USB device from your KK2 board. Now take your five male to male cables and plug them into your receiver. Be sure that the negative is on the correct side. You want to connect the cables to the aileron, elevator, and rudder. And if you've got at least two extra channels, you want to connect those cables into the auxiliary and gear channels. Note that you're still going to take the server cable, cable coming from your ESC for the throttle and plug that into the throttle channel into the receiver. You're not going to plug this wire into your KK2 board. Now you're going to take the other end of these male to male cables and plug them into the left side of the KK2 board. You're going to use these top five rows. 
In row one, you're going to put the aileron. In row two, the elevator. Row three, the auxiliary. And if you're using a four channel radio, you can leave that empty. Um, in row four, you're going to use the rudder. And in row five, you're going to put the gear channel. And again, if you're only using four channel radio, you'll leave that empty. So you actually only use three of these male to male cables if you're using a four channel radio. Let's go ahead and plug mine in. Note that the negative on these connectors is actually on the outside edge of the board here. So negative is typically the brown, black, or the darkest wire on your servo set. Now on the right side of the KK2 board, we're going to plug in the BEC and the servo connections, making sure again that the negative or the, the dark wire is on the outside connector. You want to leave row 1 empty. In row 2, you want to plug in your BEC. You want to leave rows 3 and 4 empty. In row 5, you want to plug in your elevator servo. In row 6, you want to plug in the Y adapter for the aileron servos. If you have separate right and left ailerons, then you're going to plug the left aileron into row 6 and the right aileron into row 7. In row 8, you're going to plug in the rudder servo. You want to plug in the Y adapter into your battery for testing. Now I suggest you leave your KK2 board outside of the plane with everything still hooked up just for testing and adjustments. We're going to be pushing the buttons here so you want easy access to this thing. If you need to, install some short servo extensions on your wires in order to get this thing outside your plane. The other thing you want to do is just double check your different connections and make sure that everything is set up right and you have all of your negatives on the outside of the board on the right and on the left here. Now if you wanted to you could take your buzzer and you can plug it into um, your board. Um, it goes on these two pins right here. I'm going to leave mine off um, because it, it just beeps every time you um, hit a button um, in, in some other instances so I'm just going to leave mine off for now. Um, we'll hook it up later. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to power this thing up. So for safety reasons, we're going to turn on our transmitter here before we give power to our receiver and everything else. Um, if you feel if you uh, want to be really safe, maybe you should remove the propeller from your plane. Um, make sure your throttle's in the lowest position for safety. So now we're going to supply power to our ESC and BEC. So remember, we have this Y adapter hooked up to our battery. And I don't think it really matters if, which one you plug in first. I'm just going to plug in my ESC first. And you should start to see the screen on your KK2 board light up. And uh, I don't know if you saw it, but you should see the open arrow logo here on the front when, I, when you first plug it in. And you'll see this press any button for status on the screen. If you put, push the leftmost button here, uh, you actually see a menu here. So let's zoom in here so we can see this. Okay, now we're going to configure some things on the KK2 board. Now, if you got the extra two channels in, on your radio, we're going to tell the board which channels to use for, to turn on the stabilization and auto leveling. So first, we want to hit this leftmost button, which says Menu. Then we want to move down, hit this third button here to go down to RC Setup and hit this right button here to go into the RC setup. We want to go down to stability input and select this. You can move this up and down but you want to choose gear and click this right button here to save it. Next we want to go down to the auto level input select the right button here to choose that and you want to move this up and down until you see throttle and then click the right button here to save it. So now 
stability is assigned to the gear channel and auto leveling is assigned to the throttle channel. Now it might sound incorrect to assign auto leveling to the throttle channel but the throttle channel is actually just the third row on this left side of the connections. So let's say you have a four channel radio and you don't have the extra switches on your radio to turn on the stability control and the auto level control. What you could do is you just come down here into stability control or auto level control go into that and um, in mode you want to go into the mode and change it from stay, stab channel stabilizer channel and change that to just either off if you want it off all the time or on so it's on all the time and click the right button here to save it this will leave the stability mode on all the time until you come back in and switch it likewise if you want to change on the auto level to be always on go down to the auto level control go into there for the mode change the mode from auto chan to on and save it so now we want to go back so we're going to hit this left button here and then we're going to go down until we get to RC inputs we're going to select that by hitting the right button now you should see values in both columns for each connected channel. On your transmitter you want to center all your controls including centering the trims. Now make sure you set the throttle to the minimum though. I check mine, I'm going to center everything. Okay, once you've done that, press this fourth button here on the right that says Cal for Calibrate. Okay, you'll notice that all your values go back to zero on the, in the right side column or close to it. Now you want to test all five of your channels. Aileron, rudder, elevator, gear if you have it, aux if you have it. And on the screen you should notice a change of plus or minus a thousand when you move the sticks or the switches completely. This is my aileron. Notice the the actual servos aren't moving at this point only the values here this is my elevator that's my flap switch that's for my auto leveling this is my rudder and my gear switch for the stability control okay that looks good okay now we're ready to do some more testing the actual um, movements of the control surfaces we're gonna, first we're going to uh, test the server direction so what we want to do is escape out to the status menu so we're going to hit the leftmost button here to get back to the status menu we'll hit it once and get back to the main menu hit it another time and I see the status screen Note that this status screen will only stay on for five seconds by default. If it does go off, you can hit this button here again, and um, it'll give you the status again. Notice on the status menu, you can see the values for auto leveling and stability, and whether they're on or off. Currently, mine are both off. Now, if you notice the auto level or the stability is on, you want to turn that off from your transmitter. If you're using a four channel radio where you manually have to do those, turn those off, make sure you go ahead and turn them off. Now use your radio to test all the control surfaces and make sure they're moving in the proper directions. Right aileron stick should yield right aileron up. Down elevator stick should yield elevator up. And right rudder stick should yield right rudder. Now we're ready to test the gyro direction and stability control. At this point you want to turn off auto leveling and turn on stability control. So I'm going to flip my switch to turn on stability control. You can notice you can hear my servos creaking already from uh, me moving this board around. 
So as I move it right, left, up and down, you can hear them move. I try to keep this real still. So when you install this thing in the plane, you're going to want the top of the board facing the nose of the plane. This is the top of the board right here. So this is going to, this is actually on my plane, this is going to have to be mounted around like this because the nose of my plane is right here. So you just want to make sure that when you mount it in there that it's level and you want to mount it close to the CG. Now let's roll the board to the right quickly and when we do this the left aileron should come up and the right aileron should go down. Notice how my left aileron goes up. If I look at my right, it should go down. If they move in the opposite direction, you can use the M6 and M7 mixers to reverse the controls. I'll put a link to the manual that explains this in more detail. Next what you want to do is you want to move the board down very quickly to simulate going into a nose dive. When you do this, you should notice that the elevator pops up. This is the board going down. So if that's reversed, what you want to do is you want to use the M5 mixer to reverse the control. Now we're going to test the yaw. We're going to twist the board this way and that way very quickly. Yaw the board right very quickly. Rudder should move to the left. And if you yaw it to the left, the rudder should move to the right. If it moves in the reverse direction, you can use the M8 mixer to reverse the control. So next we're going to test auto leveling. So first thing we want to do is we want to turn off the stability control. I'm going to turn it off from my radio. You want to hit the left button to go into the menu. And then you want to go down until you reach the balance meter screen. Select that. This is a pretty neat thing. You see this what looks to be like a ball on the top of the screen here. And uh, this is going to um, save what the plane thinks level is. And this could actually be different for each plane. Um, it's not necessarily what would be level if, you, if we sat this on a perfectly level table. Um, some planes actually um, fly at an angle so you might have something where the ball actually sits back a little bit. So what you want to do is you want to have this thing level um, as if it were inside the plane and if you want to go ahead and put it in the fuselage at this point and I'm going to turn mine around as if it were in the plane here and I'm going to try to keep it as level what I think is as level as possible and you don't have to line the ball up in the middle of the circle here before you hit the button that's not what you're doing you're we're trying to set the zero point um, at this time so what you're going to want to do is put it inside the plane get it level and then you're going to hit this button back here which is says CAL for calibrate and you want to keep it really still when you do that now if you notice any the plane flying kind of funny um, you might want to come back and recalibrate it so now you want to hit this first button on the left to go back to the main menu so now let's turn on auto leveling control and test it out so if I roll this board to the right well, the left aileron should come up and the right aileron should go down and vice versa. If I roll it to the left, notice my right aileron comes up and the left one goes down. If I simulate moving the nose down and I hold it, I should notice that elevator come up. And if I bring the nose, simulate the nose going up, you see the elevator going down. And notice it, does, it won't do anything if you yaw the board right and left because auto leveling doesn't do any effect on y'all. So guys, one thing I want to point out when you uh, plug in your battery, you want to make sure you keep your plane perfectly still or still as you can or you will get a sensor error. Let me show you here. Let me do 
can see my sensor error. If this happens, what you do is you just unplug your battery and plug it back in. You don't have to keep your plane level when you do this. You just have to keep it still. And also remember that you've already calibrated the auto leveling uh, in step three. So it will remember that setting every time you turn on the board. Okay, congratulations. You've successfully set up your KK2 board on your plane. Um, just remember there's a lot more that you can do with this board. And I also suggest that you read the Open Arrow 2 manual uh, to get more details. And I hope you uh, enjoy the video. Please like it if you did. Also subscribe if you're not. Um, I'll have other future videos including a flight video to kind of show how this thing works. Uh, probably put my GoPro camera on the plane and test it out. Stay tuned and thanks for watching guys.